everyone, it's been ages since I've done anything for this channel. I've been either too busy or too lazy to do YouTube. But today I'm having a bit of a day off and the season 2 finale of Snowpiercer has just premiered on Netflix. So I thought we may as well just watch it together and see what happens. Oh and by the way, uh, major major spoilers because obviously I'll be watching and commenting as I go along. So if you haven't watched the show and you're planning on watching the show, go ahead and do that first. With that said, let's go. So we're starting with... So it's uh, the finale is two episodes. They didn't release an episode last week. So this is now episode nine. The show must go on. I mean, the still for the episode that you see on Netflix is already weird as hell. Is that Will Ford dressed in like a greatest showman outfit? What the heck is going on in here? I really love Ruth and I'm always jealous of her hair. Like my hair is particularly terrible today. I could never get it this tidy, you know, in the nice like braid updo sort of thing. I've really been enjoying um, Ruth. I know she was a bit of a villain in the first season, but I think they kind of did a good job of um, sort of growing her character and developing her so that it didn't seem like too much of a 180 when she turned around and she's now on our side. Okay, so this finale, these two episodes are starting um, from the point after Mr. Wilford kind of won or won over most of the train, so he has now taken over command again. Melanie's somewhere out there, we've abandoned her. Last time we saw her, Snowpiercer and Big Alice sped past her. And uh, Wilford is now in charge, Andre is imprisoned, Roche is, I think, in the drawers with his family, so, you know, Times are pretty dark for the good people on Snowpiercer and they are pretty good for Will Ford supporters. Kevin! Oh my god! At least he's on screen. I was worried we wouldn't even see him in this. I'm not gonna go into details now about what happened to Kevin in previous episodes. Obviously, if you're watching this, you know. Um, but, I don't know, I'm really hoping they do something with his character and they don't just kill him off. And I, I'm also hoping they don't leave him. I I hope he's in season 3 and I hope they don't leave him on Wilford's side the entire time. Because I think out of all the characters to kind of switch sides, he would be the most interesting because he's such a minor character. I feel like this show is really looking down on him. He's supposed to be just, you know, he's, all, he's not all that brave. He's not brilliant like half of this cast of superhuman engineers and uh, like Alex is, I don't know what, 15, 16, and she's this ama amazing engineer and Leighton is this hero of the people and everybody else has like these special abilities. And Kevin is just a guy and I, I don't know, I just feel like it would be really interesting to take a normal person who's occasionally a little bit of a bitch, but not necessarily a horrible human being, and do something with that, rather than always focusing on these amazing heroes who are not like everybody else. Okay, anyway. So this is really cool. It looks like... So we've already been through this when there was one sort of revolution with, with some people sympathizing with the tail and, and then like all of these secret little meetings. And now it's happening again, except it's Ruth. It seems like at kind of at the head of it and she's kind of slightly conspiring with Till. She's trying to find out what happened to Roche and his family. It's really cool. It's like... It's so believable. 
because this happens in the real world and it happens in society, like the people who are on top, they end up at the bottom and then they sometimes kind of change their perspective and then you have to have a revolution to try and find balance. You kind of keep going back and forth until you hopefully reach the golden middle where things actually work. So they're talking about <clears throat> <coughs> should not eat, eat crisps while trying to speak. So they're talking about Audrey and how she defected. And I know that a lot of people are still kind of not sure whose side she's on. I mean, it seemed pretty convincing from the last couple of episodes that she was back under Will for its influence and she was enjoying helping him. But there is still a slight possibility that she's trying to spy and she's just going very, very deep undercover. But if that's the case, unless something happened off screen that we didn't see where she, I don't know, tried to get Kevin on our side or something like that, if she's just deep undercover, and she helped completely fuck up this guy's brain. I really don't know how I feel about that. And not only because it's Kevin, and as we established, I love Kevin. Not only because of that, but it's just, I don't know, what price are you willing to pay to win this war? And I suppose that's a question that always shows up in, shows up in wars, but um, it's a very dark choice. If she's spying for Snowpiercer and she decided, okay, okay, I have to destroy this person and basically make him into a mindless servant of, of Wilford in order to complete my task and everybody on my side is going to hate me because they don't know what I'm doing. Is that worth it? Is, is one human's kind of freedom and life is that is that worth what I'm trying to do to maybe help out in this um, conflict between Will Ford and and the other side and the people of, and and Leighton I guess and his um, friends and allies I don't know deep philosophical questions. It's a very cheesy intro, but when you hear it enough times, you start to enjoy it. How are the evening's festivities coming on? Right on schedule, sir. Will Ford is so much fun. He is just such a prick. I'm really enjoying Sean Bean in this role. I know that he's played the villain before, but I've actually, I don't think I've ever seen him in anything where he's played the villain. I've only watched him um, in series or movies or things where he's a good guy. So for me, it was kind of a nice surprise. He's super enjoyable. You just, you love to hate him, but, but he's also enjoyable to watch because there are some villains where I genuinely hate them. That's already difficult to do. Making you really hate the villain is not that easy. Villains are usually quite compelling and a lot of the time people try to excuse their actions. Um, but there are some other villains. So for example, um, Hannibal in Hannibal. I genuinely just hated him. I did not want to see him on screen. I wanted him dead. <laughs> I'm probably in the minority because so many people were shipping him and Will Graham, but no, I I just hated Hannibal. I would have killed him myself if I had the opportunity and if I didn't think he would probably eat me before I could do that. Whereas with Will Ford, like I hate him. I definitely don't want him to win. I am not excusing his action. He is 100% a villain for me. But I also find him really enjoyable to watch and I always want to see what he's going to do next and how he's going to say his lines. 
Right, so let's see what, what he's um, kind of cooking up, because they're apparently having a big party, he's, he's getting measured for a suit, because he's a fucking ass. It's the apocalypse, it's the end of the world, and he is so self-obsessed. This is incredible. I mean, I suppose that's the point of his whole character. He does not want this to end. He does not want humanity to have any hope, because he's, then he's gonna lose some power. He's not gonna be top guy anymore. So, yeah, it makes sense that he will be celebrating with this amazing big party and wasting resources on his suit. Oh no, they're talking about the special surprise. Coming out of Wilford's mouth, that can't be good. So you can enjoy some of it. Is that black caviar? Is he eating black caviar? Are you joking? Who in the world I when they were when they were um, figuring out what they wanted to take on this train, they were like, oh yeah, and we're gonna make sure there's black caviar. What? Putting Ruth and Kevin together to do something. So I think this solidifies that, okay, Ruth has now become the leader, that's very clear. She's the one that everybody's looking up to on our side. And the fact that she's getting put together with Kevin, I think that definitely means that Kevin is going to have to be the villain in this and she, she's gonna have to somehow work against him, which I guess... I guess that's better than not having him on screen at all. I just don't like where this is going. I don't want this character to end up bad or to end badly. But hey, I mean, it always happens with this kind of character. So what do I expect? All the classes mixed up and down. What a mess. Well, you ought to begin a full census. I want the passengers organized like in the old days. I want to know who is where, who is what. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so what he wants to do is he wants the class system back because classes were mixing on Snowpiercer and now he wants to put everything in its rightful place, quote unquote. Oh, okay. So it sounds like Javi is going to the other end of the train, he's going to the other engine um, to pick Alice and Bennett is staying in the Snowpiercer engine. That's interesting, that means they're gonna have people on both ends of the train, but it's also quite dangerous because they're separate now, they can't help each other. Oh, hang on, okay. So this is happening before they tried to pick up Melanie. So obviously Wilford isn't planning on picking her up at all, uh, but Javi and Bennett are. So maybe... So, I mean, when we saw that episode, when the train sped past Melanie and there were sparks flying everywhere, I immediately knew that's probably the brakes and they're trying to stop and they just can't stop, they're moving too quickly. But we don't... But we don't know whether they actually managed to do that a little bit further down the line. So maybe they did manage to stop. She just has to catch up to the train. That's a possibility. Because I don't think the show's gonna go for... I originally thought the show was probably going to go for like them going around one more time and her surviving on rats or whatever and then coming back for her again after another month. But now looking at this... I think they're probably going to manage to pick her up somehow, and we just didn't see that at the end of her episode. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I should really stop pausing every like five seconds because this video is going to be five hours long. What's going? The sooner you'll find out. Oh, come on, I know you're going to tell me. Sorry, sworn to secrecy. So, this is a nice little moment. I said I don't pause every five seconds. I'm still pausing every five seconds. But this is a nice little moment um, because, so Ruth is asking Kevin what the surprise is and he's refusing to tell her very adamantly. And I think that's, 
maybe a callback to the fact that before, before he was completely brainwashed, he did give up information and now he's at the point where probably nothing could make him give up any of Will for its secrets without permission. Although obviously Ruth is just asking him, she's not torturing him, but it might be a way to show that he is so loyal now um, that that same thing wouldn't work again. A little surprisingly, Will Ford now wants everybody's patient files and all of their information. Were they involved in the rebellion? Did they have a ticket and all of that? It's like it's like a classic dictatorship. <laughs> I like this little exchange between Ruth and Kevin. If you took it out of context, it would almost sound like he was her kind of bitchy teenage nephew here. She's like, oh, I know all the passengers in this train and I feel responsible for all of them. And he's just like, how unpleasant. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Obviously, in this context, it's more worrisome than funny. Um, but I just think that the two of them could be really fun together if this wasn't such a dark kind of scenario. Was that a painting of a person eating a baby? I didn't see that very clearly, but that's what it looked like. I know Wilford has some weird art, but I didn't think it was this weird. Alex is probably so annoyed, because Apart from everything else that has been going on and her worrying about her mom and being kind of conflicted between Melanie and Wilford, she's used to being the main engineer on Big Alice or, or the one who's in charge of things because Wilford is always uh, also an engineer. And now they're sending her Javi there and she's, she's basically, she's, she's marking her territory. She's like, don't touch anything, I'm in charge here, which completely understandable. That's exactly what I would do. Oh, the whole magical touch the train and you will, I don't know, read its mind, I guess, that Melanie's doing and now Alex is doing as well. It's kind of cute, it's just not very easy to believe, but then nothing in Snowpiercer is science. Okay, so Bessie's trying to convince Will, to convince Will for it that he needs her in some capacity, so she wants to continue being a trained detective. And he's like, like, oh, but there's no crime on my train, there's only order. And she's like, you're not that naive. Of course there's crime. Yes, there's crime, Bess, but he's usually the one committing the crime. He doesn't want you poking around, girl. He doesn't, because what you're going to find out is that most of the crime on this train is committed by the main engineer guy who plastered his name everywhere and claims to be king of the world. Oh yeah, here's Josie again. I, I keep forgetting about her. It's not that like, I don't mind her character, but I don't think enough interesting stuff has happened with her this season. I think I was fonder of her last season. Um, so last thing we found out about her is that clearly she was being treated on Big Alice for her freeze burns, uh, but now she's also been augmented kind of like Icy Bob was, but better because she looks normal, which by the way, come on, what? Like she was burned so badly. She wouldn't, like even if all of this would heal, she wouldn't look the way that she looked before, but magical science. And so clearly Wilford is planning on using her for something. Although I think what's kind of ironic is that I don't think that Wilford wants, at least within his lifetime, for people to get off this train and actually live 
back on earth i mean the train is on earth but you know what i mean of the tracks and not moving and staying in one spot i don't think he wants that because he would lose some of his control this way but also his scientists have basically been developing ways for people to be able to do that. So I think that's interesting. I don't know what his plan is or whether he just kind of doesn't realize that that's a little bit ironic and that probably this technology would be used against him if, if somebody managed to, to do that, to figure out how to do it. Or I guess to steal the data on how to do it. villain's minion from a Disney film. He's like, oh my god, Mr. Wilford is giving me some work and oh, I need a little girl. <laughs> Where's this going? What the ever loving crap is this shit? What? He has a carnival car. He has a carnival car. He has a carnival car. What? What is going on here? This, this show is stripping. This, this show is on drugs. Why would you have that? I know he's a showman, but the end of the world, man. Come on. Why? Why do you have like a little? Willy's world? What even is that? Kevin's gonna be in charge of- Kevin's gonna be in charge of that. Stick up his ass, um, serious uh, head of hospitality Kevin is going to be running the carnival. I can't wait to see this, honestly. Okay, does he really think that this is going to change anything or get people on his side. I mean, sure, they're gonna enjoy it for a little while, but it's just one car. It's a small space with a few boring rides. Like, people will get bored of this so quickly. Even in, like, a big carnival, even in Disney World, there's only so many times you can go to Disney World, and Disney World is huge, and it's got so many different rides, and they're being updated. This is, like, a teeny tiny little hole with with like a bit of cotton candy and like old-fashioned merry-go-rounds sure at first people are gonna be like oh my god I remember when these things existed and and they're gonna be like so touched and so you know so impressed but then after a few days it's gonna be like yeah it's just a, a thing going around in a circle it's pretty boring uh, we're gonna die Kevin, the child is not a dog, honey. The child is not a dog. I know Miss Audrey treated you like you were a dog, and you've probably internalized that, but the little girl is not a puppy. Hey, hey, hey. Those are for teenagers. <laughs> Those aren't for teenagers. <laughs> oh, he's telling all the people who are kind of just being all over the rides. <laughs> it's like, oh gosh. Oh dear. What am I watching? What is in these crisps? Wonderful. That was really good. Okay, you know what? I'm starting to sympathize with Will Ford. He just, the guy just really wanted to be on stage. He really wanted to be an actor. And then the world ended and he was like, gosh darn it. Where am I going to, you know, act and, and be fabulous and... Yeah, I think the next step is he should just be a drag queen. I think he would really enjoy that. I'm not making fun of drag queens. I love the drag queens. I think they're really entertaining. But as flamboyant and like 
larger than life as he wants to be, I think this would be the next step because he loves doing dress up and you know, all of that stuff. And I'm not saying that necessarily everybody who's flamboyant is a cross-dresser, but I'm not saying cross-dresser. I'm just be saying drag queen as, as like a performer type job because I think he would be amazing in that. Sean being in drag, performing as, I don't know, Miss Willa or, or something. Uh, and entertaining everyone on the train. Actually, I guess it sort of makes sense because he was so into Miss Audrey and she's kind of the same. So maybe they are the perfect couple. It's just unfortunate that the world froze over and now they're evil and trying to ruin people's life just for the chance to perform in front of them. Oh, okay. So he has a little snarky puppet show. How did I... I can't even... Why do they have puppets on this train? Who made the puppets? Where did they... <coughs> where did they get the materials for the puppets? This is ridiculous. But he has a little propaganda puppet show. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is all about, I guess, discrediting Melanie's idea that the world is warming up. And that's what they're watching right now. So it's basically just making... <coughs> fun of her for even thinking that and he thinks that this is gonna convince the people it probably will because apparently these people are all insane but just this is the most bizarre idea ever okay he's making fun of Alex can't he see that this is obviously a bad move like he wants her on his side and he's been losing her this entire time. Maybe he realized that once Melanie showed up, he couldn't kind of keep Alice. Alex, I keep saying Alex because of the train. Alex on his side because she was always just gonna come back to her mother. Because I suppose she, she spent enough years with her mother to have a really good memory of her. So it's not like she was a baby when he took her on the train. And um, so maybe he realized he wasn't gonna keep her anyway and now he's just being a snarky asshole to her. But still, that's a very bad idea. She's an engineer. He needs her and he's antagonizing her and she is very obviously going to turn against him and fuck him over. So I don't know why he's doing that. I think this, his, his ego just, just can't resist. Oh wow, acting out Melanie dying. <laughs> okay, he is batshit insane. Nobody who's even half intelligent will, will like believe this or you know anyone can see that this is like just blatant propaganda it makes makes him i think it makes him less credible it makes him seem desperate like doing this whole thing where oh melanie's gonna die and she's an idiot and little puppets bowing bowing and going the engine will provide the engine will provide like a little coat like so you're seriously you're admitting in front of the people you're showing them clearly that you want to be a cult leader? Do you think everyone's an idiot on these trains? I mean, I know some people are, but surely most of them are not that dumb. I mean, I know I know crowds are dumb. I know groups of people, especially in like extreme situations, can be really stupid. But again, this is a very big risk to take, I think, with your propaganda. You could be a bit more subtle with it. Okay, so he figured out that they lost contact with Melanie and Alex is just finding out. But the thing is, this doesn't necessarily mean anything. They know this doesn't mean she's dead. It's just communication issues. I mean, yes, it doesn't look good, but it's not like they saw, they, they went by and they saw the climate research station explode or something like that that would suggest she's dead. They just know she couldn't contact them. And considering the reason for why she couldn't contact them was just an 
antenna blew in the storm and like was damaged like surely they knew that that was a thing that could easily happen so so it's not like oh that that, that means she's dead absolutely like it's more likely that she's alive if she survived half the time half the time uh, in that station and kept like pinging the balloons it's more likely that she kept surviving and just something went wrong with the communications I think Ruth should be more careful. I think it's becoming too obvious whose side she's on. And she's asking too much question, too many questions. I think she could play it a bit more, a bit colder and a bit closer to Wilford. She's being very honest about where she stands. And she's always said that she stands with the train, regardless of who's running the train. Um, but I think that she could protect herself a little bit more and just pretend to be on Wilford's side. Just, just a touch more, just to avoid danger. Two as well. So she just challenged him. Guys, don't... Like, he's clearly crazy. This is not a normal person. Don't be open about the fact that you hate him. Just go ahead and hate him. But, like, you're not going to make him well you might make him make a mistake if you piss him off enough but it's it's just unnecessary don't be sassy to him it doesn't most of the time it's not gonna get you anything just just go along just fly under the radar let him do his stupid shit and then make your own plans I know most people hate Zara, and I'm not a huge fan either, but I appreciate the fact that they're at least trying in season two to make her more likable, to give her things to do. If you think about it, it's not that difficult to imagine why she was the way she was. She was just kind of trying to survive. To begin with, she didn't want to be on the train. She would have rather died. And then she was on this train and she had a miserable life. I don't think she's a horrible character. I don't think she's as annoying as people make her out to be. I still don't think she's too compelling. I definitely don't ship her and Leighton just because I don't see any chemistry between them. But I don't think she is as bad as some people say. Okay, so she's clearly much better kind of designed augmented than Icy Bob because she seems to be enjoying the extreme cold. Hey, bullshit science! Who doesn't love bullshit science? I mean, I know who doesn't love bullshit science. My friend Dagmar doesn't love bullshit science. She hates it, but I can go along with bullshit science in a show which isn't really about the science, it's about the characters. So I'll take it, whatever, she's a superhero. I like superheroes. Against the wall. I guess the question now is, is Josie going to go on Wilford's side because he's done so much for her, he, you know, his doctors healed her burns and now she can withstand the cord. I don't think she will. I think she probably will remain loyal. There might be a little bit of kind of hesitation there or the show might tease us with the idea that she might defect, but I don't think she will. I can't see that. See, the thing about Leighton, I like Leighton, but I'm not too interested in him. Every time he's on screen, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. I just, I kind of want to see what happens to him, but I'm not that interested in watching it happen. I haven't got any of your stuff left, have I? That musky smell of integrity. Some people have been complaining about um, David Dix's acting. I don't think there's anything wrong with his acting. I don't know what people are having an issue with. Um, 
I don't know. I was very surprised when I found out it was him because it's very strange to me that a star from Hamilton is now in a kind of not superhero but like a dystopian TV show. Um, but I thought he was a good enough actor. I don't think he did anything wrong. Oh wow, that's such a classic villain thing to say. Your open heart telegraphs your every move. And then Leighton's going to be, no, love will save the world. kind of cute. So um, they're showing up to the party that Wilford organized and um, Zara is showing up with Till as her date and Till is like in a very cute suit. Oh, they look very cute. I, I don't think that's necessarily hinting that they may become a couple um, but I think it's a very nice defiant thing to do like we're gonna stick together and you're gonna be my date. Oh, <laughs> until it's like, if Wilford threatens her baby, I'm gonna kill him with my butter knife. Maybe they're going to be a couple. That'd, that'd be kind of cool. I'm sure that'd make Zara more likable and we wouldn't have to worry about her and Leighton and like Josie, the whole love triangle thing. Maybe Leighton could be back with Josie and Zara and Till could, you know, be a couple and everybody could raise their baby. Who knows? Super excited. Austin and LJ are interesting as well. I mean, obviously, she's kind of evil and super crazy. I think more crazy than Eve. I don't know which. She used to be super evil. Now I think they're trying to play her off as just insane. Uh, but they're an interesting couple. There's Audrey. Come down, Joseph. There's no need to bellow. Let's see if there's any hint that Audrey might still be on our side. I'm gonna be watching for that. I don't know if I want her to be or not. Um, we'll just see where it goes. I love an eccentric table of guests. Oh god, she's calling him Willie. Since when is she calling him Willie? She at least used to call him Joseph. Willie? <laughs> I love hospitality. Hospitality is so much fun. Kevin is like straightening a glass or whatever on the table and Ruth is like, you had your carnival. This is my room. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, they're such interesting characters. Out of this whole thing, I think anyone from hospitality is more interesting than anyone from the tail or the rebellion or first class or anything else. Let's, let's have a series just all about hospitality, their daily lives, dealing with these idiots and just having to like run the train and make, make sure everything runs smoothly. Fine. Event management, the series but after the apocalypse. <laughs> I love how petty they are on the surface, but they can also be deeper characters as well. Well, isn't this lovely? Hmm? Okay, so now they're having a conversation about how Melanie lied about being Wilford and all the stuff that she did in season one, which is interesting because yes, obviously Melanie did a lot of bad stuff and they're going to play that against her. I don't think it's going to work because everybody loves a reformed villain. 
you know, it's it's a very compelling thing when somebody kind of changes their ways and turns around and goes, no, what I did was wrong, which is what she did, which is what Ruth did. So I think when that happens, you're likely to have, I don't know if that really happens like that in real life, but I think at least in literature and movies, you're likely to have a bit more support than if you were always the good guy, because if you were always the good guy, it's more difficult for people to identify with you because they're like, well, you know, I've done some shady shit and does this person think they're better than me? And you know, that that's it's easy to resent a hero like that. Whereas if it's kind of like, if it's a hero who used to be a villain, if they're kind of an anti-hero, a lot of people are like, okay, well, they're flawed, but you know, they're still the good guys, so I'm going to support them. So I don't think this campaign against Melanie has much of a chance succeeding. Oh, okay. So I think LJ just accidentally confessed that she was guilty of that murder from season one. I don't think that's what she meant to do, or, or I don't think she realized that Will Ford would actually care. And I think she's in deep shit right now. Because she was like, oh, I found out Melanie's little secret, so she had to overturn the verdict. And Will Ford was like, well, if she overturned the verdict, does that mean you were guilty? I think she's actually gonna get punished. Which, I know she's had it coming for a while, but then they've kind of changed her role in the show and her purpose in the show so much since season one when she was just an outright <clears throat> excuse me villain that I don't know if now is the time to be getting KJ punished and also she's one of the few people who support him well I, I guess no most of the train supports him but she's one of the few people in this particular like circle that he's interacting with that support him so I don't know this is interesting but he could use her as an example he could be like, no, and I'm going to restore justice now because Melanie wasn't just, but now we're going to have justice. I think that's what he's going to do. She knows the train now, and I'm proud of her. Oh, that was actually so sweet. I don't know what to think about this relationship. So um, Oz basically just defended her. He was like, she fell a long way from first class. She learned to work. She has changed. She's a good person. I'm proud of her. That is so adorable. I feel bad for him. I don't know if she actually cares about him. I think she does in her kind of very crazy way. I just think she's insane. But I do think she has feelings. And I think maybe she really actually does care for her, uh, for him. Um, but I don't know if he's going to get completely screwed by this entire situation. Okay. What's happening now? It's been a while. So... Wilford was like, okay, Osweiler, why should I keep you? You used to be a brake man. You obviously couldn't do that right. And then your girlfriend here put her father's eye out with a fork. Why do I need you? Why should I keep you? And Osweiler was like, okay, I'm going to do something. And he's just gotten up from the table. And I genuinely have no clue what he's going to do. Oh, if you'll forgive me. Shit, he's gonna play the piano! Oh my god! What is this episode? What is happening? This was so weird and came out of nowhere, but it was a really lovely performance. I've never looked up the actor playing Osweiler. Is he like a singer in real life? Or I have no idea. That was beautiful. That was insane, but beautiful. I think this is now the Hunger Games and he just had to show President Snow, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilford, that he was really in love with LJ and not just a rebel. And now he's gonna like leave them alone because they're so in love. Yeah, I think we're in the Hunger Games now. That's what's happening. Yes. 
So Josie found Leighton, who's um, stuck in, like, I don't know, underneath the train, wherever it is, shoveling shit. And she's like, oh, the people on our side haven't given up. Uh, they want to know what the next move is. And I'm like, guys, why are you asking him? Like, he was a leader in the right situation, but how the heck would he know what the next move is now? He can't plan, really, from where he is. Like, you have to make the plans and potentially get him out of there, and then maybe he could help you. But why are you asking him for what the next move is? He doesn't even have enough information. You're the ones interacting with Wilford. He doesn't even know what the heck is going on. Like, ask Ruth or get together, put your heads together, come up with a plan. Like... Why is Leighton, why are they, why is the show trying to make him the main character? The show doesn't need to have like one main character, there's clearly more than one. And they keep trying to push him in this position and kind of tell us that he's important. But at this particular moment, there's no reason why he would be important. Oh, hang on a minute. Audrey's jealous. Audrey's jealous that Osweiler just um, performed and like sang this song really well. And she's like, oh yeah, great. Anyone else want to sing? <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh, he's gonna be murdering people now. So, you know, when he was asking for medical records and all of that, and now Alex is revealing his secrets in front of him. Girl, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, there used to be 200 people in Big Alice, but then they were a drain on resources, and clearly he got rid of some people. I, hmm. I mean, this is not a surprise, but why are you saying this in front of everyone? This puts everyone in this room in danger. Couldn't you have just, like, talked to somebody in private? Why is everybody showing their cards? Oh, no, this is creepy. So now he's invited roots to the table right after Alex basically told her, hey, he's coming for you, right in front of him. Come down, you naughty little boy. Oh, God! You just called Kevin a naughty little boy. That is disgusting. Just what? Oh. Which means there's only room for <gasps> Oh, shit. Come on now. Okay, I'm going to hate this. So he just said Ruth and Kevin um, opposite each other and he's like, well, uh, we can only have one head of department. And I know he's gonna do something horrible and I don't think it's gonna come out in Kevin's favor. Maybe he's trying to win her over back to his side, but... I don't know, does he really think she would do that? Would he be able to trust her? All we have to do is address the train, inform them officially we're not returning from Melanie. Okay, so he wants the, he wants her to address the train and tell them they're not coming back from Mel for Melanie. Okay, Ruth, you should do it. Honestly, you should do it. If all of you die, then you can't make any plans. Girl! She just refused. Lie! Just lie! Okay. I mean, this would be the perfect time to kill Ruth off, because she just had her, like, redemption moment, she's been a leader, you know, the sort of thing that happens before you get rid of a character. 
But I think that would be a very big loss to the story and the cast, because at the moment, Ruth is one of the more compelling characters. Who are you going to rely on to kind of pull the audience in? Josie and Leighton and Zara and even Till at the moment are doing fuck all. Like, they're just not, their stories are not that interesting right now. Alex and Melanie kind of, but for the most part, right now, Ruth is your biggest player. She's had the, the biggest character arc. There's more that you can do with her. Yeah, I hope they don't do that. I'm not gonna be happy if she dies. She is one of uh, my favorite characters. I think all of my favorite characters in this are going to die, apart from maybe Melanie. I quite like Melanie. This is really only happening because they are opposing him to his face. Why why can no none of these people make secret plans? Come on. Wilford just said, sometimes I'm morally dyslexic. I don't know what right from wrong. Apart from the fact that this is very offensive to dyslexic people because even if it's an analogy they know words from other words i don't think dyslexic is the right term but in terms of what he means yeah yeah i think you are morally incapable of i think you are incapable of discerning between right and wrong well for it i really do think you are I suppose that could be a defense for you, because if you don't know what right from wrong, then you don't know when you're doing wrong, but mm, I don't know if I want to give you any leeway in that direction. Chance to close the case. Wow. This is going quite dark. So he's got the people who killed the breach man in custody and he's about to like freeze their lungs to death, you know, the, the execution method that they used in season one. And now he's asked Till to kind of decide what they should do with them. He's like, oh, you're gonna be my moral compass because I don't know about morals, so now you decide. Is he playing a game here or are they trying to play it off as just being genuine? Like he genuinely doesn't know and he's genuinely asking for advice and he's genuinely surprised when she says, no, don't kill these people. They were basically just following your orders. I think my instinct would be to say he's totally playing her and he's got something up his sleeve. How have all these people who support him not figured out yet that he betrays his own constantly? Like, I mean, I know, again, I know this historically has happened and this is how charismatic leaders work, but this is a little bit too much. Like, he's very obvious about the fact that he doesn't give a crap about anybody. So they've taken Ruth to where Leighton is? I think it just shot himself in the foot. I, I think that those two together would be a lot more dangerous than when they were like on separate sides of the train. I think this is good for them. What is... Now there's an orgy. There's an orgy. Okay, no, there, there, there's, there's an orgy happening on screen. Why? Why is there an orgy happening on screen? What is the deal here? In his, like, quarters on Big Alice and poor Javi is there driving the engine and he's like, what the fuck do I have to listen to? They're just trying to throw all the weird shit in there right now. Everybody's just high and having sex. Sure, why not? 
Javi is not enjoying this. Oh, and oh, he heard Melanie when she was trying to contact them. Oh, and he turned it off so that they wouldn't hear. So was this a parallel party going on while everybody was like having dinner on the other side of the train? These people were having an orgy? Who even are they? Okay, Javi has a plan. Okay, he's written a note. What? In lipstick? What is he doing? Oh, okay, he's, oh, right. What? All right, so he put the note in the list, lipstick, flushed it down the top. Okay, so it's gonna get to Leighton. Okay, that's clever. That's clever. That's a clever way to do that. So he's gonna, he's gonna get a message to them that Melon is alive. That's a bit risky. I mean, how could he know that they will notice the random lipstick just falling that particular second through the pipe? But of course they got it. And now they're gonna know Melanie's alive and they're gonna be all like, we need to fight. Yes, there we go. Andre. So Leighton and Ruth now know that uh, Melanie's still alive and trying to contact them. the end of the episode yes it is wow okay what a wild ride you guys this was just batshit insane not at all what i expected not at all what i expected from this episode but I really enjoyed it. I think I'm the type of person to enjoy this thing. I think some people would probably go, what the heck happened and not necessarily like it. I have to say, I loved it. It was, it was crazy and I loved it because at least it surprised me. It had some completely absurd moments. I, I, I got a lot of cool moments from many of the characters. Osweiler, what the heck was Osweiler doing? And then a lot of stuff with Ruth. We got a little bit of Kevin. As I said, I really enjoy Kevin. Yeah, so much happened. Um, it's gonna be like a really packed couple of last episodes. I think I'm going to end this here and watch the final, final episode of the season tomorrow because it's getting dark. I'm gonna lose the light. And also, I need a little bit of time to process what I just saw because, yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap my hand, uh, my hand? I'm still trying to wrap my head around a few of the things that happened. So I guess there's gonna be a second part of this and I will see you in the next one. See you later, bye.